So the end products, just a review, I've got my hydrogen carrier molecule, oxygen, ATP, and that oxygen is going to be released into the environment. Then the other two um, products of light reactions are going to be going to the dark reactions. I'm going to cover now. Okay, now you would think light reactions obviously take place in the, when there's light. Okay, dark reactions, you would think, okay, well, it takes place only in the dark but it doesn't. It can also take place in the light, so it's in both. The reason why is the dark reactions are, rely on carbon dioxide, which is available all the time because it's dependent on carbon dioxide. Now, this cycle was discovered by a person named Melvin Calvin, and so they named these reactions after him called the Calvin cycle. Make sure you know this. Um, they also call it the C3 cycle, and we're going to see that some plants are called C3, and the reason why is because it has three carbons. Okay, now we already said this earlier, that the dark reactions take place in the stroma, which is in the chloroplast. Oops. There we go, chloroplast. Okay, and so it's in between the thylakoid membranes, stacks of them. So here are the steps. Let me pull them all up here. There's some other new terms in here that we're not really going to be focusing on. So key things, we've got dark. We already said this dependent on the carbon dioxide, which comes into the plant because we breathe on our plants. You may have heard someone say, well, your plants are better or they're more healthier if you sing to your plants. It's not because it's listening to the music of you singing, it's because you're breathing on your plant and so the carbon dioxide is having that process of photosynthesis, which provides energy for the plant. So that's why talking to your plants is actually good for them. So one of the steps is it's going to bring in carbon dioxide, then the special sugar called ribulose biphosphate, don't worry about that, is going to bind to the carbon dioxide. When those two come together, they call that carbon dioxide fixation. Now, what it's going to make, and we're not going to focus on this, but if you see it, you'll know what it is. Um, it's called PGAL, and that is phosphoglyceraldehyde. I'm not going to ask you to spell that on the test. But the basis of this is what is made. So after it goes through all of these different steps, it's going to make one sugar, one glucose. Okay? So the key here is that this dark reactions that take place, it has to go through the cycle six times. So it has to go through steps one through four, six times to make one sugar, okay? Now, I'm gonna ask you a question on the test, something like, how many times must the cycle go through to make two glucose molecules? So you would put down 12, okay? Does that make sense? So it's a six to one ratio, and so you just multiply. So there's a test question about that. Okay, so the products of the dark reactions. We have glucose. Now glucose, oops, sorry. So the glucose is not only used for the plants, just for the daily work, but it's also stored, and that's what we eat when it's stored as a starch. Okay, so let's look at all of this back together. So here's my equation. Here is the Calvin cycle which is also the dark reactions, okay? And so here it is right here. So this is the chloroplast. Here's the light reactions. This is a thylakoid. I've got water being split, oxygen given out. What is also given out is the ATP and the NADPH, which is going to the Calvin cycle or the dark reactions. The other thing that's coming in is carbon dioxide and some water. What is coming out after it goes through six times is glucose. Okay, so this diagram up here breaks down all of the PGAL, the whole thing in the cycle and the sugar and the carbon dioxide fixation. So these two together when they merge together, they're going, that's the carbon dioxide fixation. It makes the PGAL, okay? And then, so the Calvin cycle is going to give off the glucose. 
and then it will also then return these molecules back to the light reactions and it will start the whole process. So it is a cycle, okay? So the light and dark reactions are going all the time, okay? So the light reactions is during the light and the dark reactions is light and dark because of the carbon dioxide, okay? So hopefully that makes um, a little bit of sense. Here's just another diagram, um, taking everything, all the diagrams out. I don't know if this will make more sense. Here's the thylakoid, here's the stroma. So this whole thing would be a chloroplast. So it kind of shows the arrows, what's going in, what's going out. Um, so I'm not gonna go over that. I've already talked about that in the last lecture, okay? So, kind of finish things up here. I'm going to pull these up here. Now, those were all the C3 plants. Now, we had mentioned earlier that plants in the higher temperatures, like the desert plants, so these would be desert plants. They have special pathways called C4 and CAM, and that is Crassian Acid Metabolism. I'll pull that up in just a second. But the C4 compared to the C3, there's just one additional carbon, and that's so that it can go through this carbon fixing faster, that carbon fixation that we talked about um, for the dark reactions. So it can do this and grow in higher temperatures. So there will be a question about that, why there's an advantage of having a C4 over a C3 plant, okay? Um, so in this case, the C4 plants must have more energy to grow compared to the C3. So they've adapted over time by um, increasing by a carbon. Now, cactus, okay, um, they have actually their own, it's the CAM, Crassian Acid Metabolism. And remember I mentioned that most plants, they when they open and close their stomata, so in this case, it's opposite because it's just too hot during the day. Um, so they're going to open it up at night for that carbon dioxide to leave oxygen, water vapor. And so they're switched. Okay, and those are the desert plants. Okay, so structurally, they do look a little bit different. So if I compare these, here's the C3 plants. These are plants in our area. So the main difference is looking at the mesophyll. Okay. Um, everything else is pretty much the same. The veins are a little bit larger, but here's the palisade, here's the spongy. So that was in our first illustrations. And now if you look, there's only one type of mesophyll. Okay, in the air spaces, there's some on top, on the bottom, but they're pretty large cells, but it's only one type of cell. Okay, so the mesophyll is different. And so this is gonna be a test question. How does the crassian acid metabolism photosynthesis help plants to survive? Okay, and the reason why is because it allows the regulating the carbon dioxide that's going into the plant and the water vapor going out, and it's the time of day that it does this. Okay, so the time of day, I could put night up here too. Okay. So really it's going through the stomata guard cells and when does it take place? Okay. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. So we will finish up and do take a look at the diagrams, looking at several of them. One of them may make more sense than the other. So have any questions, ask me in class.